Hey everyone, Tim Clapham here from hellolux.com with another tutorial and this time it is uh, X particles for Cinema 4D and we're going to create a kind of cheesy uh, matrix type of effect and you're going to laugh at how 90s this is. As usual, it's just the foundation of something that you can obviously evolve into something a lot cooler, but hopefully it'll give you some inspiration. So first thing we're going to do is choose to add an X particles emitter and obviously if we press play we just get this stream of particles. Now what I want to do is I want to create a kind of grid of particles emitting in all directions. Um, and to do this I'm going to emit from a cube, but I'm not going to emit just from one cube, I'm going to emit from a few. So I'm just going to create this cube here and set that to be 5 by 5 by 5 and then hold down the Alt key, come up and let's add in a cloner. Let's set this cloner to be a grid array. So now we have 3 by 3 by 3 and let's set these to be 800 rather than 200. And if we just pull out you can see that we have this array of cubes with this cloner selected we can hold down the alt key and let's come up and add in a connect object and that essentially makes this one object we can then select our emitter and if we switch to the object tab the emitter shape I'm going to set that to be object and the object that I'm going to use is my connect object by default the emission is set to emit from polygon center which is perfect in the particle direction using thong normal so if you imagine it's going to emit from each face of each cube in the direction that that normal is facing. So if we press play you can see we get this pretty cool looking grid of particles. So it's already looking pretty funky. Um, let's take this a step further. Let's select our cloner object, come up and just add in a random effector. Let me just select this connect object, switch to the basic tab and set the uh, use color to be on so we can just see these cubes a little bit more clearly. And if we select this random effector um, we probably want to increase the values of this and it doesn't really matter what you use just by all means experiment um, and set it to say 180, like 250, uh, you know, just 200 or something like so. So you can see now that we have all of these cubes randomly displaced. And now we still get that effect, but it's looking a little bit more um, disorganized and a little bit kind of cooler. So if we just hide this connect object for now, select this emitter, let's come to the emission tab and let's just add in another zero here. So we're emitting quite a few more particles. And there we go, and you can see now that's looking pretty pretty nice if we kind of move around in amongst it. It's got that sort of techno matrixy feel. The other thing that we could do if we wanted to is to select our cloner and let's come up and choose MoGraph Effector and add in something like a shader effector. I'm going to switch off scale, enable position. And for this I'm going to just set the X to be say 50 and Z to be 50. Switch to the shading tab and let's choose to add in some noise. If we open up the shader, let's change this noise to be cell noise. So we've got this checkerboard kind of effect. I'm going to set the space to be world space and I'm going to scale this up to around 1000. The other thing that we could do here is we could animate this. So if we set that to say 1.5 and if we right click on here and just choose animate, you can see that what happens is we get this kind of mosaic effect that's changing and these colors are going to be used to displace our cubes which we're emitting from. So once we've done that, if we rewind and press play, you can see that we get this kind of funky displacement effect happening just in adding another dimension to the piece. Okay, cool. Next we can add in some geometry or perhaps we could render it as sprites um, so that we have something visible in the viewport rather than just the dot from the particle. So I'm going to double click to create a new material and let's just call this zero. Okay, and I'm just going to set that to be plain and switch off specular. I'm going to enable the alpha. Could use luminance, I'll just use color for now. So in the color channel, in the texture slot, I'm going to choose effects and add in my X particle sprite shader. If we just collapse this, open this up. So the emitter that we're using is our emitter here. I'm going to choose random from gradient and let's fold this down and let's make these some kind of electrical colors something like so so we're just going to pick between this blue and this green 
let's jump back up and switch to the alpha channel and in the alpha channel I'm going to add in effects and add in a spline shader let's open this up the text that I'm going to use I'm just going to put a zero in here and let's choose a font I've picked one called conduit I'm going to choose center and need to set the X offset to 50 because what we see up here is basically our UV space and this is what we're going to see on our sprites. Let's adjust the Y offset as well, just bring that up a bit, something like so, around 80. And let's enable the fill option. Although the preview doesn't look correct here, if we look down at the material itself, you can see that we now have a solid O. Let's just control drag to duplicate this and open up this and just set this to be a one. Okay. To use these uh, sprites, I'm going to come to the X particles and add in a sprites object. Switch to the object tab. Let's drag our emitter into here. Now, if we just press play, you can see that what happens is we're getting all these cubes generated. And if we just render, you can see we've got a whole bunch of cubes. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to set this to be placard. I'm going to take the scale from the particle radius. Let's just have a look at the emitter and see what we've got that set to. So the radius is currently set to 5. Um, I think maybe let's make that a bit bigger, say 10. Let's just rewind. Let's also select this emitter for a moment, just take one of these zeros off our birth rate so that we can see things a bit quicker in the viewport. And there we go. So what we need to do now is we need to use our materials on our sprites object. If we switch to the textures tab, you can see we have this texture list in here. So let's drag our textures into here. Um, let's just rename this one. And choose material to apply. Let's just choose random selection. Now we should be able to rewind to the beginning. I'm just going to switch this shader effector off so we don't get the uh, kinks in the grid. Let's just press play. And render. And there we go. And you can see all of the ones and zeros. And if we um, come in a bit closer. You can see the result and obviously if we pull back something like so they're kind of going to be rendering as dots all you need to do now is add in a camera maybe some lighting you could add a little bit of depth of field and you're going to get quite a, an interesting result now I rendered out a quick test of this earlier and here we go you can see the kind of result that we get so there we go, and I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you're interested in using X particles, head on over to hallolux.com and hopefully you'll find a bargain price for such an awesome, powerful particle system. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.